Wisconsin got Kentucky again. Wisconsin got Kentucky again. Not in the way we thought. Not in the way anybody would have expected, of course. Wisconsin gets Kentucky. The pride of Pewaukee, Jack Golke. And we're going to talk a little batteries on the way. But, of course, we got to break down a little bit of this March Madness action. Good morning. And thank you for enjoying it with the Six Pack, the Scotty Six Pack, the only podcast talking all things Wisconsin sports with you six days a week. I'm your host, Kedrick Stumbers. You can find me on the website, formerly known as Twitter, at Kedrick Stumbers, and follow the podcast at Scotty Six Pack for the latest updates in Wisconsin sports. We talk all things Wisconsin. From Pewaukee to another place, from Pewaukee to Portage. There we go. Those aren't very far apart, but. Wow. The the game of the day on day one of this tournament. And before we go any further, never, never change this tournament. Never. You want to take out the auto, you want to take out the auto bids. You want more at large bids. No, we don't get that. We don't get this moment where a division two kid. Jack Golke. No Division One interest coming out of high school. He goes and plays D2 basketball. Is not like a, a standout All-American winning D2 National Player of the Year awards. Jack Golke playing Division Two basketball. Who transfers to play with Oakland. Under Greg Campy, one of the longest tenured coaches in the sport, spending 40 years at Oakland alone. You want to add more play-in games so that we could have LSU or Seton Hall or St. John's playing Kentucky in that game? No. I want the 24-year-old Jack Golke taking down the country's number one recruiting class from Lexington, Kentucky. This kid, Jack Golke, as he takes down the Kentucky Wildcats, 80 to 76, a 14 beating the three. Jack Golke, who makes 10 threes in his NCAA tournament debut. Jack Golke, who shot eight twos from the field all season. This is what he does. He he takes and makes threes. A, a kid who is going pro in anything other than sports. A kid who will be in relative obscurity the rest of his life but for two hours, but for two hours on a Thursday night in March, all of America knows his name. Never, never change this tournament. It is the best thing we have in sports. The very best thing we have in sports. Jack Oki makes 10 three-pointers, something only a handful of people have done in the NCAA tournament. And there are so many games in the NCAA tournament. It was an impressive, impressive performance for, for a Horizon League team that, look, and, and I said when this game was getting spicy uh, around halftime, I, I was far from predicting um, Kentucky to lose this game. Granted, uh, <laughs> my brother-in-law, Horizon League alum uh, from UW-Milwaukee, he, he had it. And I haven't talked to him about it too much, but I, I wonder if he had it for kind of the same reason that I thought about when I was having a conversation with somebody about this game near halftime, which was, I get how this can kind of happen. Look, first, you, you get a hot, hot, hot three-point shooter, right? Of course. Of course, that helps fuel any upset. But Kentucky was concerning all season based on the fact that just 
nobody wants to play defense on that team. No, nobody guards. We saw Oakland just will itself to a win over UW Milwaukee in the Horizon League tournament final. And that Milwaukee team is not a team that guards. That, that is a team that has one of the worst defenses of college basketball. So maybe, maybe it's not a perfect comparison. But if you get a Kentucky team on a night that is also unwilling to guard, you might get this. With a little bit of luck, you get this. It makes sense. It, it's, it's not just a total flash in the pan, although the win obviously happens in a different way other than Trey Townsend going off for, you know, 40 uh, against UW-Milwaukee in, the, in this game. He was relatively tame uh, uh, for, for for Oakland. But, yeah, a, an all-timer of game. Greg Campy almost died in 2017, the head coach of Oakland. He had a horrible bout of sepsis and nearly died. We don't get that moment. <laughs> Greg Campy dies. Oh, never change this tournament. Never change this tournament. Um, another Wisconsinite made headlines. Night one of the tournament. Marcus Domask, and yeah, he plays for Illinois. I, I understand. I understand. But Marcus Domask with a triple double. This kid was playing at Southern Illinois. A year ago. Now he has a triple double in the tournament to take down the Moorhead State Eagles. 85 to 69. Illinois moves on. And, and Moorhead State was a little bit spicy early. A little bit spicy early. I, I think they scored the first nine points of the game. But Marcus Domask posts a triple double to take down. The Moorhead State Eagles with 11 rebounds, 10 assists, 12 points. Awesome, awesome, awesome game for, for another Wisconsinite. The Wapan native, as, as we in Wisconsin all know, after watching him cook the Badgers a couple of games. That's great. That's great for him. Awesome Wisconsin headlines uh as we cover all things wisconsin sports here on the scotty six pack uh but i do want to talk about the badger game because the badgers play tonight at 8 50 p.m or so probably a little bit later um of course the kansas game started later than that scheduled 8 50 tip um and oh wow if that wasn't a game that delivered as well, a 22-point lead, the Jayhawks nearly blow the whole thing. Maybe should have blown the whole thing with a chase-down block that, look, I am a Kansas sympathizer. My dad went to school there. A chase-down block that my dad first called for it to be a flagrant foul, then said, oh, no, that's just a common foul, then said, oh, no, he got all ball. Jayhawks maybe should have lost that game. Maybe should have had that 22-point lead evaporated. And, and it makes sense why. D down the stretch. At elevation, you're a team with no bench. Playing against Buckyball. Deep team. Presses you every possession. Samford just ran out of time in that game. It really, really, really did. If that game is five minutes longer, uh, I, I don't think Kansas wins that game. Um, but the Badgers play James Madison tonight in round one of the NCAA tournament in Brooklyn. One of the last tips of the day. We're going to be waiting around all day, sweating, sweating. And this is one of the trendiest five twelve upsets that, that I can imagine that, that I can not imagine, but that I can remember, I should say. Um, oh, I lost the page that I wanted. Um, and part of that does make sense to me. And as I move around, shift around, trying to get um, a piece of paper that I, I would like to be able to see. Um, that's good enough. And I and I can understand why the five twelve there is so trendy. Of course, five twelve upset happens all the time. A, a, a twelve has about just shy of a you know 55% win rate against 
twelves or against fives. James Madison has won thirty one games this season, and yeah, I, I'm going to crap on some some of those some of those games, some of those wins in in, in a second here. Um, but you have to be incredibly good as a basketball coach, as a basketball team to win 31 games in any league. They're still D1 athletes. They, they are still getting full rides to go to that school. Win 31 games in any league is hard. Ask any, ask any coach who coaches in this sport. Winning 31 games is hard. You, you have to be incredibly talented. But there, there is a, a sense of forgetting about everything James Madison did after beating Michigan State. Because, of course, James Madison had the win that kicked off college basketball season. That, that reminded us why every game in this sport really matters. Every game, all season long. And... why this sport is so fun to watch from November to April. Because James Madison beats Michigan State in overtime on November 6th. Since then, James Madison hasn't played anybody. And the only two games James Madison has played against real competition in, in Appalachian State, because there was a moment in time where we were having a conversation and maybe not we on the show, but we, me, the general college basketball sicko commentariat, we're having a conversation about whether or not the Sun Belt was going to be a two-bid league. The Sun Belt, the conference that James Madison plays in, also Appalachian State. Ended up not turning out that way because those teams took you know too, too many losses to the rest of the Sun Belt, which was not a good league. It was not a good league. The highest-ranked team that... James Madison played the rest of the season after taking down Michigan State was an out-of-conference game against Akron, a team from the MAC. Granted, made the NCAA tournament, I guess, but a, a team from the MAC and a weird game in February. That was James Madison's best win since November 6th. A team ranked 121st at Kenpon. Not a world beater. The only two times. James Madison has played teams ranked within the top 100. Ranked higher than 121 since November 6th. Was Appalachian State ranked 81st? And James Madison lost both of those games. James Madison didn't have to play App State in its conference tournament because App State got upset early. Look, you have to have an incredibly good team to win 31 games. But just taking the, oh, well, James Madison is the nation's longest win streak at 13. Wisconsin was on a skip. Maybe Wisconsin isn't as good as the five seed they have. Wisconsin's 17th at Ken Palm. They, they, are a, they are a five seed. Arguably, by the advanced metrics, they should be a fringy four seed. I'm not making the argument that they should have been. They're closer to the four by those metrics and some metrics. I know I'm cherry picking a team sheet stat, but still. Meanwhile, James Madison is only what, like 58th? It's not that they are super underseeded. What they are is undersized. This is a matchup that I don't have. A, a lot of faith that James, James Madison can show up and show out against a, a Wisconsin team where Stephen Crowell might feast. Stephen Crowell is on a tear right now. If he keeps that that high energy, he could be very good. TJ Bickerstaff is James Madison's tallest player at six foot nine. Stephen Crowell has three inches and almost thirty pounds on him. There's real size there. Terrence Edwards, I think, is the biggest, I, I think, matchup problem for Wisconsin in this game. Uh, on on the wing, you know, six foot six, almost two hundred pounds. He's he's legit. Uh, I guess that would be the one, you know, matchup nightmare that, I, that I'm worried about. But 
if Chucky Hepburn is healthy, I, like I, Chucky Hepburn is having an awesome, awesome, awesome season. I, I, I think people like kind of aren't totally appreciating the the standout season that Chucky Hepburn is having. And yes, I know that he got um Big Ten All Defensive Team honors, but Chucky Hepburn this season has seventy four steals. 72 steals, rather. That's the second most in a single season in program history. He's having an awesome season. Chucky Hepburn has a 3.33 assist-to-turnover ratio. That's the third highest mark in program history for a single season. Chuck Chucky Hepburn is showing up and showing out and, and showing out as of late, right? Where the scoring numbers have been down. But if he can complement some of these other great pieces with higher scoring, like he did in the Big Ten tournament and in midweek interviews, Chucky said he, he's got to stay thirsty for blood. I think he is ready to, to continue taking it to the hole. He is out there and, and Look, say, say what you will about T.J. Bickerstaff. He, he is good. He will be a tough defensive assignment. But I think Chucky can handle it. He is a, he's an awesome, awesome, awesome defender. And when you add this edge of a Chucky Hepburn as a scorer that this team has not had all season, that there is, there is something there that, that gives me a lot of confidence uh, for, for this Wisconsin team. Now there is a there is a piece that makes me a little bit concerned, which is that James Madison can shoot the three very well. They are one of the best teams in the country at shooting the three. Wisconsin is one of the worst teams in the country at defending the three. This concerns me a little bit, and I think would be the way Wisconsin loses this game, particularly given the fact that. Um, James Madison also defends the three really well. They have the second best three point shooting percentage allowed in the country, according to Ken Pop. I wonder, though, if the size advantage that Wisconsin has in the front court, you know, it's not just Stephen Crowell. It's also like when Stephen Crowell has that advantage, it opens things up for Tyler Wall because if you think about the matchup with Purdue, right? Tyler Wall is covered by Zach Eady, so the Zach Eady can go and double Stephen Crowell later. There's not a guy there. That was that James Madison can send at Tyler Wall and say, okay, then you go over and double double Stephen Crowell all the time as like this extra reinforcement. They're gonna need that reinforcement ready right away for, for Stephen Crowell, which can really open things up for Tyler Wall, for these other pieces on the wing, AJ Store. John Blackwell, like we've talked about how when Stephen Crowell is on, it opens up the ability for, for cutting lanes, for driving lanes to be made by some of these, I mean, higher end talents that Wisconsin all of a sudden has on the wing and guys like AJ Store and John Blackwell. Um, so I wonder if that advantage minimizes the, the three point deficiency because if Wisconsin is able to, I mean, especially if they're able to get Stephen Crowell going on the three. He's shooting, what, 50%, 50% in the postseason from three? That's going to make things very hard for a, a already challenged James Madison defense. And if they then need to make a tough decision about are we going to continue to guard on the perimeter like we always do and guard the perimeter very, very, very hard? What does that do for your interior defense? Against a team that you have a size advantage on, look, there is not a huge gap, but James Madison's two-point defense is just outside of the top 100 in, in the country, according to Ken Palm. makes me think that that there is a real chance here that this team can 
take the ball inside and take advantage of the matchup tendencies that James Madison has at guarding the perimeter. For, for a Wisconsin team that isn't a team that actually shoots the three particularly well, right? I think Wisconsin might be fine with that as long as they can defend the three. And yeah, I know that's asking a lot uh, for, for this Badgers team. But as long as they can defend three, I think they'll be good. Now, the, the James Madison team can, can show up, show out, kind of like this Oakland team did against Kentucky. This is an experienced team, a pretty deep team, one of the oldest teams in college basketball. There, there is a a real chance here for, for, for James Madison to get Wisconsin. But I don't know that James Madison matches up particularly well with the Badgers. I'd be I'd be worried about Terrence Edwards and how that happens because Terrence Edwards does not commit fouls. He draws a lot of fouls and he can shoot the heck out of the ball at the free throw line. I don't know. Um, I, I feel pretty confident that Wisconsin can take advantage of its size, of its athleticism with, with AJ Store, with John Blackwell, and, and, and can gut this one out. I, I feel pretty good about that. Um, and, and then hopefully Wisconsin then is is moving on to to Sunday and has a chance at make making a sweet 16. I either going to play Vermont or Duke. I think it'll probably be Duke. I, I, this Vermont team is is solid, uh, but Duke just has more top end talent that I don't think it, it can that that Vermont can mess with. I, I think Kyle Filipowski is really good. I, I think he'll be a he'll be a tough matchup for for Wisconsin. But Caleb Foster for for Duke has been ruled out of the NCAA tournament. He averages eight points a game for the Blue Devils. That might give Wisconsin a little bit of something here. Um, but I think we can really have a conversation about, you know, Wisconsin's chances making the Sweet 16, what that might look like after this game tonight. Uh, I think they're still pretty good. I worry about Kyle Filipowski. I know that he has kind of struggled to find what his identity is all year. Uh, I don't think he's been as good as I would have thought he was at the beginning of the season when I watched him at the Champions Classic. But, you know, from, from the time I went and saw him in, in November until now, he's definitely improved. And I think my only question is how much has this Duke team improved as a whole? Because there's a lot of talent there. It just feels like they haven't quite unlocked it all season. But this tournament, this tournament unlocks talent. That's what I'd be worried about uh, as a Badger fan. Um, looking ahead to this afternoon, we, we got a Badgers basketball appetizer. Wisconsin Women's Hockey is in the Frozen Four. They play tonight at 6.30 p.m., um, we have a preview show up for that game up in this feed right now. We talked about Wisconsin hockey playing the first and four against Colgate, uh, that game at 6 30 PM tonight. You can watch that on ESPN plus look, I know you got multiple screens going already. Just, just shift one of those over to this hockey game at, at 6 30. It'll lead you right into the Badgers basketball game. So Wisconsin tries to clinch a spot in the national title game. We break down all, all the names, all the, all the, all the scheme you need to know, you know, how that game might go and, and what Wisconsin might be facing in a national title game against Clarkson or Ohio state. That game coming earlier in the day at 3 PM also on ESPN plus you can also listen to it on uh, iHeartRadio. radio, find it at 1070. The game listen to our good friend, Noah Clark over there who joins us uh, in our preview episode that we have in your feed. Now uh, that'll be fun. I also have a piece up on badgernotes.com right now. You can find that linked in this podcast description. Talking about Caroline Harvey going home for for this Frozen Four, uh, she's got a lot of people there, uh, and and we highlight and talk about her excellent excellent season and what she means to this Badgers team in the Frozen Four. Uh, so go check that out. Otherwise, we'll we'll be back to talk to you. I think tomorrow, regardless of how both those games go, we'll be back tomorrow morning. Uh, so thank you.
for enjoying your morning with a six pack. The Scotty Six Pack, the only podcast talking all things Wisconsin sports with you six days a week. I've been your host, Kedrick Stumbrus. Find me on the website, formerly known as Twitter, at Kedrick Stumbrus. While you're here, leave a kind review, five stars, nice comments. You can also watch us on YouTube, youtube.com slash at Scotty Six Pack. Hit the subscribe button and the like button. I got to go watch the basketball on Wisconsin.